Okay, it is Passover 2024 and I am getting the house ready for our Passover Seder. It's going to be done here by ourselves. We have the matzah in here waiting for us. This is going to be my plate with all the elements, the bitter herbs and all that. This lady, our neighbor, gave us these from her clippings from her yard. They smell amazing. And I'm just going to have these two candles here along with the lamb. And yeah, let's, um, let's get started. So I'm just unpacking this lamb right now. I have a bowl here that I'll be marinating it in with some white wine and red wine vinegar but for now i'm gonna unpack this this is a boneless leg of lamb it's about three pounds i believe five pounds <laughs> oh my gosh that's a lot um so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and unpack this and put it inside this pan so i can go ahead and start seasoning it i have my oven set to 375. right now we're gonna go ahead and season this meat i did cut it in half because the middle portion was just a little bit thin towards the middle so i just cut that in half but as you can see i just put some slits in this meat and we're gonna put the garlic right inside of it but first we are going to season it so you're going to put a good hefty amount of salt. So we have here some, uh, all these are dried. So we have dried parsley, about a tablespoon. We have about a tablespoon of thyme, dried thyme. And then about two, two and a half tablespoons of dried oregano. We also have some Dijon mustard. This is honey Dijon that I'm using. And we have some squeezed lemon juice that I'll be using when we Put it over in our bowl once we're done seasoning and then of course our fresh garlic so i'm going to go ahead and just start rubbing these herbs on it you just want to rub so it sticks to it nicely um so we're going to flip it on the other side Now we're gonna have to do our thyme. Now with the dried herbs in general, you're supposed to rub them, especially with thyme. You wanna rub them to just extract those oils if you're not um, if you're not blooming them right away in a pan of oil or something like that. You want to rub them. But also the oils will start to um, come out more as you're rubbing the meat, when you rub it all in and kind of massage it in there. So either way, you're getting the meat what it needs. It needs that oil from the 
curves to kind of shine through and seep in. That's our goal. And we do have a little bit left over that we are going to sprinkle onto the veggies that we're going to put in the bottom of our pan. So no worries if you have more than enough left over, you're going to be sprinkling the veggies with the same kind of they're all going to be in the same pan, so they're all going to have the same flavor on. All right, now that you have that all seasoned, you are going to, we are going to stuff these slits with garlic, just like so. This was about 10 cloves of garlic, um, give or take. I probably did about 40. So we're gonna take our Dijon mustard and we are going to rub the lamb. Do the other side. So hopefully we have some company later <laughs> to help with these bits. Okay, um, that is done. And now we are going to transfer this over into our bowl. And we are going to add our marinade to this and let this sit while we're preparing our pan with the veggies. So. I'm just going to go ahead and stick these right into this bowl, like so. We're going to add some, it calls for Greek olive oil because this is a Greek style lamb right now, but I do not have any on hand. So you know what? The next best, best thing is Italian, straight out of Italy. So 
go ahead and sprinkle some good olive oil on there. Drizzle it on. Don't be shy. And then we're gonna do some red rind vinegar. And some white wine. About a cup, half a cup to a cup. And then our lemon juice. My hand like this because there might be some seeds in there. And this is gonna make a very delicious marinade while we're preparing our veggies. So we're gonna go ahead and let that sit for about 10 to 15 minutes as we're preparing our vegetables. So what we're gonna do is we are going to add these potatoes into our pan like so. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna act as like a little buffer to um, like a little bed for the lamb to lay on, okay? So we want, we want the lamb to be off the bottom of the pan, and we want the lamb also to just pick up these beautiful flavors from all of these veggies that are going to be down here. Um, so go ahead and line your pan with these veggies. And we have, so we have potato, we have uh, onion, red onion is what is Greek style. That adds a lot of flavor. And then you are also going to add large beef steak tomatoes. Um, this is gonna just add some acidity. It's gonna marry well with the, with the white wine that we added in there and um, everything else. So the, the sweet peppers are going to add that great, um, that great sweetness that we're looking for. Now you want to take the rest of your dry herbs that you had left over and you're just going to sprinkle that on nicely. Uh, like I said, your lamb has most of it already, but you're just going to get rid of what was left over and sprinkle it in there along with some salt and pepper. Just fold it in and wrap it. 
certain way, we want this to steam inside of the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this inner layer here. And you wanna kind of bring it together and fold it like so. of our Seder plate. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. So I have my apples here. I have about five or six apples and they're chopped fairly small. And now I'm gonna, going to add cinnamon, about a tablespoon. Feel free to go more if you want. I have some lemon zest. Oops. And that's from one lemon. I'm also going to use the juice of a lemon. I just want that little bit of extra zing in there and I feel like it keeps the apples better um, when we have that little bit of lemon juice in there. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. That just kind of like brings out the flavor a little bit more. Honey. So I'm adding a little over a tablespoon. I'd say this is probably two tablespoons. Then, last but not least, we are going to add the walnuts. I went ahead and pulsed these into the food processor so they're, they're a great consistency. I love how the consistency turned out. I think it's going to be awesome. And that's about, I'd say like three fourths of a cup or a little bit more than half a cup. Now we're going to just add a little bit of grape juice to bring it all together. And we are going to mix. Smells so good. By the way, the lamb smells so good. It's been in there for about 30 minutes. I just want to thank Food Network for the recipe I found on their website. I absolutely can't wait to try it. Um, so if you're looking for that recipe, I'll try to find a link and um, link it down below. This is what we are going to be using for our Seder plate this year. Um, last year, not last year, the year before, because last year I went to a Seder that somebody else hosted, but um, the year before that, I made one with raisins in it, and I like plumped my raisins beforehand in some hot water, and um, they were the golden raisins, and I believe I used orange zest instead of lemon zest, and orange juice, and red wine I believe I forget maybe it was just orange juice but either way and I think I put cloves in it last year but it was divine and delicious so I can't wait to try this one I will try to find the recipe for this one as well and link it down below but that's it guys that is our cherisee mixture for the Passover Seder plate and now we're gonna move on to the bitter herbs. So for this year, I'm not gonna do um, parsley. I'm going to do arugula. This is has become a tradition of our family to use arugula for our bitter herbs. So we are going to just um, dress this with some olive oil and lemon juice 
and a little bit of salt right when we're ready to eat and partake of the Seder meal and the Seder plate. Um, but right now, I'm just gonna set this aside with the rest of the Seder plate elements and wait for that lamb to come. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to make my own flatbread. I tried this yesterday and I did succeed, but I added an egg. So I wanna try it without an egg this time and see how that turns out. So in my blender, I'm doing like a, almost like a pancake style, crepe style flatbread. I don't wanna like make dough, wait for it to rest and all that. So I'm going to just, in my blender, put a little bit of water at the bottom. Probably that much. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. It'll probably be about a cup, but I'm just testing everything out here, guys. So bear with me. It's probably like a cup and a half.
carpet. You can eat this. You can these are savory, but like you can eat these with whatever you want. You don't have to make them savory. You can make them like you know, plain and just have them with whatever you want. You can put cream cheese, you can put, you know, jelly, whatever. I don't know what everyone uses but like I want to eat that <laughs> I would just want it to be savory to be honest like to have this with some avocado or some eggs you know in the morning or even just chicken um whatever you want like tuna I mean the sky's the limit for unleavened bread you can have it with anything Yep, it's starting to fall. All right, so for now, I'm waiting for my lamb to come out. I have about a minute, a minute, an hour and 39 minutes. So just to give you a quick recap of what I made while the lamb's been in the oven, I have some beautiful homemade flatbreads that I did on the stove top. I have my, uh, whatever this is called, chutney or ch cherisey. And then I have my bitter herbs, which is gonna be arugula this year. And I'm gonna dress that with some olive oil, lemon, and salt when my lamb comes out and we're ready to make our way over to the table. Okay guys, this is about the three hour mark. It has 35 minutes left. I put it on for three and a half hours. So this is almost the three hour mark. I see some um, sediments here that came on the corners that I wanna check. I just wanna check because I wanted it to be uninterrupted for at least three hours but I do smell, it does smell like it needs some moisture. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it and check it. I feel like I need a towel. <laughs> so this is my first time making this, this recipe, by the way. And I feel like it's gonna come out amazing, hopefully. Hopefully by the grace of the Lord, it will come out amazing. All right. Oh my goodness. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. I need to get you guys a close up on this. This looks amazing. Oh yeah, baby. You guys, this looks really nice. Okay, now I will take some scissors, cut the edges off. And now I'm going to just brown this a little bit more because I want my potatoes a little bit more brown. I want my lamb a little bit more brown on the top part, but this is done guys. Like you could totally eat it like this. It's all about preference from this point on. 
um, let me just grab, oh, and, and one way that you test it is if it falls apart easily, then you know that it's, um, that it's done. So let's just see here. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my, oh my guys, this is done. This is done. Okay. So I'm going to put that back in and for about 20 ish minutes, um, maybe 15 just to get some char on my potatoes. Okay. So before I put it back in, this is the, at this point you would add your feta. If you're going to add feta, um, you just want to put some crumbles. Let me move my camera so you can see. You just want to put some crumbles throughout, mostly on the veggies, but you can put it on the lamb too. Why not? And you want to leave it in big chunks because it's going to cook a little bit in the oven. This is Greek style, guys. I'll leave this block for when we eat. We want it to be a little bit more fresh. But so that's, um, that's going to cook a little bit more in the oven. Just wanted to give you that tip really quick. If you're, if you're at the point where you take it out and you want um, a little bit more sear on it and you take your parchment paper off, sorry, my hands are so dirty. Um, then that's when you would add your feta and then put it back in. So that's what we're doing right now. And we're going to put it back in after I wash my hands and it'll be about 15 or 20 more minutes. And then we'll check on it from there. Okay. So the lamp's about to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and dress the bitter herbs that we are using. And the way I'm going to dress them is just with some olive oil. Salt. And that brings in that salt water element that some people use tradi traditionally on the Seder plate. Um, I just go ahead and I dress it with the salt already and with the lemon because that's another sour agent. So I also have my lettuce here. This is my Seder plate. So I'm just, I have some um, romaine lettuce that I have on one side. Chop this just a little bit more just so it's not so long and dangly. that's good my tongs and just give it a mix a mix and that's my timer for the lamb all right and I'm gonna go ahead and just put this right onto the Seder plate right across from the lettuce okay and now for the set or coruset or however you say it. I forget how to say it. I, I used to know, but oh well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give this a mix. And then we're going to go ahead and put this on this side. We're a family of five, so we're all going to take a good helping of this. This is our favorite, actually. Um, our favorite part of the Seder. This prepared horseradish, it doesn't really have anything else other than horseradish, water, distilled vinegar, sugar, salt, natural mustard oil. So um, it does have a little bit of sugar, but it's only literally like it doesn't even say it doesn't even say how much sugar's on there. That's weird. Like this is not cut with anything guys this is super potent if that's even the right way it's super dangerous um 
So I'm just gonna put this right onto the tray and we don't need too much. That's probably way too much. But that is my Seder tray. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that on our table. 